uh, host today's uh, talk, which will be given by uh, Dr. Sergei Konyakhin. I hope I pronounced it correctly. And, uh, uh, and this is a very uh, interesting and special uh, case today, which uh, I, I can't remember that I had that uh, before uh, in a meeting. So Sergei is a, a young and dynamic uh, uh, theoretical physics fellow who has produced uh, a number of uh, indications with uh, uh, a very nice uh, citation curve and uh, uh, with quite a, a variety in uh, the topics which uh, these uh, works cover. Uh, and uh, Sergei's, let, let me just start and say no structures. And then after probably something like one or so year, he moved to, uh, to France, to the Institut Pascal in Clermont-Ferrand, wherever that is, uh, and uh, somewhere in France, I don't know exactly where it is. And there he started again a PhD, and that's the uh, unusual thing, uh, we, where he's now uh, close to finishing that second PhD, which is devoted to the dynamics of topological defects in exciton polariton quantum fluids. Uh, and uh, he's working there under the supervision and together with professors um, Malpuer um, hope, uh, and uh, Professor Solnishkov. So he is both uh, in, in postdoctoral uh, time, but he is also a PhD student. And he, if uh, I'm sure that he will be, if he will be successful with his second PhD, he will have two PhDs. Uh, for instance, in, in the old... Uh, uh, and very uh, conservative German academic system, that means that then uh, one could ask everyone else to uh, address you with Dr. Dr. Solnishkov, which uh, you still cannot do because you have only one doctor. Um, so this is very interesting, and uh, but this is not the main reason why we asked uh, and invited to give it, asked Sergei to give a talk and invited him to our uh, PCS uh, seminar program, but it is simply that he's doing interesting and outstanding work, which is, it seems to be very close to a number of uh, research interests in our center, including uh, the uh, research in the team of Ivan Savienka, but maybe not only. So I'm looking forward to an interesting and exciting talk uh, on dynamics of topological defects in exciton polariton quantum fluids. And Sergei Konyakin, please, the floor is all yours. Okay, uh, once again, uh, I'm very happy to at least hear uh, uh, to the uh, to the colleagues, and I happy I will uh, try to uh, that I will give the seminar which uh, make which will make sense. Uh, and just I uh, I propose to uh, to start. Yes, and this uh, talk is devoted to dynamics of topological defects in exciton polariton quantum fluids. And uh, from the beginning, I can say that topological defects are solitons and uh, uh, quantum vortices. Uh, but as far as we uh, start uh, from the exciton polaritons, well, it should be given the introduction to exciton polaritons because I'm not sure that uh, everyone is very familiar with these quasi particles. Maybe at least 60 60 percent. Uh, well, uh, no, well, really, I don't know uh, how much. And then after uh, the introduction. I will uh, pass to the first part devoted to turbulence and exciton polariton quantum fluids, and uh, the second part devoted to solitons and their modulational uh, instability. And then I will uh, give uh, some uh, conclusions of the talk. So I hope you hear me well and you see uh, everything also well. Uh, the, uh, the text is readable, uh, etc. Yes. Yes, all is fine. Please continue. We hear and see you. Yes, and yes. yes I, I will continue. The, uh, uh, the exciton polaritons uh, are the uh, composite uh, quasi-particles in a semiconductor, in normally semiconductor uh, nanostructures. And their two components are the photons uh, 
in uh, in uh, optical uh, micro cavities, and uh, the sec uh, second component is the uh, exciton. But uh, let us start with the uh, uh, with the photons uh, here on the left, uh, where I uh, touch the mouse. Uh, you see the sketch of the structure. Uh, with a, it is a, in fact the res Fabri Perot resonator with a two Bragg mirrors, and between the, these two Bragg mirrors, uh, you see the uh, confined, uh, confined uh, electrical field, confined optical mode, uh, and uh, this is the this uh, this is this photon, and uh, uh, the wave vector of such photon. Uh, is uh, is quantized in the direction uh, along to uh, growth axis of the structure like this. And if uh, one do the uh, Fourier expansion of the energy of such photon, uh, if if one do the Taylor expansion of uh, uh, of the energy of uh, such photon. Uh, with respect to uh, wave vector, uh, with respect to in-plane in wave vector, one will obtain this uh, uh, this dispersion, this this photonic dispersion. But now it is a, uh, it is uh, no more linear. It is a, a quad, uh, it is a quadratic. Uh, how, how you see, and the effective mass mass of photon in such a resonator is uh, very low with respect to. Uh, the effective uh, mass of uh, electron, uh, for, for instance, uh, 10 to the power uh, minus 5 with respect to free electron mass. And uh, the second actors uh, for exciton polaritons uh, are the excitons, these uh, again composite uh, quasi particles uh, in uh, semiconductor nanostructures in uh, uh, quantum wells in this. Uh, uh, in this case, and they, um, due to this uh, composite structure, they possess, uh, they have the uh, the uh, the electric dipole moment, and uh, this electric dipole moment uh, gives them possibility to uh, to interact with uh, with the electric field of the uh, of the photon. Uh, how you see here, uh, the quantum wells are situated uh, where we have uh, antinodes of the electro electromagnetic uh, field uh, just to to increase the overlap and uh, and exciton photon interaction and the strength of exciton photon interaction is controlled rather it is denoted by by a rabi frequency and uh, this uh, this system of interacting uh, photon uh, and exciton uh, can be described uh, v uh, very well uh, by uh, two by two Hamiltonian, uh, where the diag diagonal terms on the diagonal terms we have energy of uh, kVT photon and energy of uh, exciton with the uh, with the lifetimes uh, uh, given by these imaginary parts, and so the off diagonal term uh, contains this uh, and. This off diagonal term contain uh, the interaction strength or Rabi frequency, and uh, already from uh, this. I, I, sorry, I just have a short question. You mentioned that uh, the trapped photon uh, in the cavity has a mass which is ten to minus five as compared to a single electron mass. Correct? Yes, uh, according to this uh, to this equation. Right. Yeah. It's for a single photon. What if you take a single um, uh, exciton, just a single exciton. But what is its mass compared to? On uh, the, the exciton mass is compared with the uh, is uh, is comparable with uh, with the ma mass of uh, electron right. of electron right. in semiconductors. So this is uh, some uh, some part of uh, free electron mass. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And this is. Uh, this is visible very well from uh, from these plots, where dashed parabola gives the the dispersion of uh, of photon, and the uh, dashed horizontal um, curve. It is also parabola, but it is uh, in fact uh, in this scale it is a line. It is linear function. This is 
uh, this is the dispersion of uh, of exciton, uh, which is very very flat. And uh, uh, now uh, from this Hamiltonian, uh, we can uh, we can obtain the two uh, the two uh, regimes of coupling of excitons and photons, um, the strong coupling uh, regime. Uh, it uh, corresponds to formation of uh, of the polaritons, and it corresponds to anticrossing for for the dispersion curves uh, with the formation of uh, of lower polariton branch and upper polariton uh, branch, and the uh, strong coupling regime uh, takes place uh, when the difference between between the broadenings uh, of uh, photonic and excitonic broadenings uh, is lower than two Rabi frequencies. And also it exists a uh, weak uh, coupling regime uh, where we have uh, no anti-crossing and, uh, uh, and uh, no formation of polaritons when the, uh, when the Rabi frequency is, uh, is, uh, is small. Well, uh, this uh, uh, this formation of these uh, regimes can be described as as follows. Uh, in fact, the Rabi frequency gives the uh, gives the inverse time of transition between uh, between photonic and excitonic states for polariton. Uh, so to have polariton, we should have enough time. We should we should give the polariton enough time to exist uh, in uh, both in both uh, cases in as uh, as as a photon uh, as an exciton. Uh, but if the uh, lifetime of uh, but the but if the lifetime of photon is uh, very small, uh, the, uh, the the polariton uh, does not have a time to exist uh, as a photon and as an exciton. Uh, normally, uh, the uh, the excitonic lifetime is much bigger than the lifetime of uh, photons. For photons, we have uh, dozens of uh, picoseconds normally, and for excitons, much larger. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, we can replace the spinner spinor wave function uh, uh, with uh, two, uh, two, two components, excitonic and uh, photonic, by a uh, common wave function of polariton. And uh, this wave function of uh, polariton obeys uh, uh, the very famous uh, gross pitayevsky equation, or in other words, mean field approximation of the Schrodinger equation. You see this nonlinear term uh, for the gross pitayevsky in the gross pitayevsky equation for polaritons, and uh, uh, this uh, nonlinear term stems from the nonlinear. Uh, normally ex exchange uh, short range interaction of uh, of uh, exit uh, of excitons and uh, uh, also it is important to uh, to say uh, several words about ways how to excite polaritons uh, uh, in general there are uh, uh, two regimes uh, uh, non resonant pumping and quasi resonant pumping non resonant pumping uh, involves the a uh, case uh, implies the case uh, where the energy of laser if is uh, su uh, is sufficiently uh, uh, sufficiently larger than energy of uh, polaritonic mode and it leads to formation of reservoir of uh, uh, of excitons uh, which then relax to uh, uh, to the bottom of uh, our polariton branch with the formation of condensate. So yes, this non-resonant uh, pumping case uh, is the scheme for to obtain the, the famous um, Bose-Einstein condensation of uh, polaritons. But uh, here in this study, we are rather directed to quasi-resonant pumping uh, when the difference of energies between uh, polaritons and uh, laser energy uh, is uh, comparable with the uh, polariton uh, broadening. And in this case, uh, 
the phenomenon on, on the stability uh, take place. Imagine that uh, we are that uh, we now uh, driving by laser uh, somewhere upper than the energy of uh, uh, of uh, polaritons. With increasing of uh, the uh, laser power, uh, obviously the the, uh, the density of polaritons grows. And uh, due to this nonlinear term, the energy of a polaritonic mode grows also. It grows, grows, grows with increasing of power. And, uh, and when we achieve, uh, achieve the case of resonance, we have the ab abrupt uh, jump in the density of, um, of polaritons. So if we, uh, uh, if we start from zero laser power, we will uh, we will follow this trajectory of density of uh, um, polaritons uh, versus uh, versus uh, laser intensity. And uh, if we uh, if we now begin uh, lowering the laser power, we will we will follow other other trajectory. And these two trajectories uh, forms the uh, hysteresis uh, loop or uh, this stability. This is uh, the famous stability curve with the two branches, lower branch, uh, lower branch and upper branch. Mm, uh, and in some range of intensities, there are two possible stable, uh, two possible stable uh, densities corresponding to some, some laser intensity. Uh, in fact, there are some some states within this loop that are not stable according to um, uh, Bagalubov the gen analysis of all um, this situation. And uh, uh, for uh, finish with the uh, instability, uh, uh, it is important to uh, to say that uh, here on uh, lower polariton branch, uh, the phase of the polaritons is. Uh, is the is close to the phase of laser, and on the upper polariton uh, branch, uh, the phases of polaritons and laser are are opposite. So, in fact, the um, uh, the phase of uh, the phase of polaritons is locked uh, to the phase uh, of uh, of the laser, and only in the region of the stability uh, loop we have some liberty. And now let us pass to the, to the description of uh, topological defects in quantum fluids. And first, uh, let us uh, let us speak about uh, solitons in uh, quantum fluids. Uh, the, uh, these uh, solitons are the density dips in homogeneous uh, in homogeneous uh, uh, quantum fluid. Uh, we and uh, this uh, density dip is associated with uh, abrupt uh, uh, jump of the phase, and this abrupt jump uh, of the phase uh, is the reason uh, why we uh, uh, why we uh, refer to uh, to the solitons as two topological defects. Uh, normally, the the solitons exist in a one-dimensional uh, quantum fluid and analytical uh, analytical uh, solution of gross pitayevsky equation uh, shows this this equation for the uh, for the wave fu uh, function of a soliton uh, uh, between the parameters we see the uh, the sound velocity uh, or uh, the uh, which co corresponds to the dispersion of bogolons. We have the uh, the speed of uh, a soliton here, and also we have he uh, helium length. And the uh, helium length is a scale parameter, uh, uh, scale parameter where the kinetic energy becomes comparable uh, with the uh, nonlinear interaction, and. Uh, here uh, on this panel uh, on the right, uh, you see how uh, how the uh, the soliton can be visible in the interference experiment uh, when the signal from 
from the cavity is summated with some reference beam uh, with uh, with some uh, some wave vector, and uh, here the soliton is visible as the interference as the uh, this rupture of interference fringes. Uh, uh, the second type of uh, topological defects relevant to to present study are quantum vortices. In fact, they are um, they are players of uh, quantum turbulence, and uh, these uh, obviously these uh, uh, these defects exist in the uh, in the two dimensional case, uh, and uh, uh, they are uh, again the density deep in the. Uh, density deep uh, 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 for uh, of the quantum fluid associated with uh, circulation of phase around this uh, is density deep, and again the uh, uh, the radial function, the radial profile of the uh, quantum vortex uh, is uh, is described by uh, by this function. And uh, the size of vortex, uh, vortex core, uh, is estimated as the healing length. Uh, and the phase, and uh, uh, here you see this exponential function for the for the phase of the of the quantum vortex. Is cor it corresponds to this circulation. And on the interference image, you you see this dislocation in uh, in the fringes. Um, and now I I hope that we know everything to pass to the uh, uh, to the new results uh, uh, to the not to the introduction but to the meaningful part of this talk. And uh, uh, the first part of the talk is devoted to to the studies of uh, of uh, quantum turbulence. But before. Uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, quantum turbulence, uh, we should uh, uh, the classical turbulence should be described. So here, here it is given the uh, definition of turbulence. It is a it is a, a flow regime with uh, irregular and stochastic flows, uh, and also resulting in the formation of uh, vortices. Uh, the the turbulence implies the uh, structures of uh, nested multi-scales eddies, or um, it's, uh, it's more or less synonym of uh, vortex. And uh, the uh, classical turbulence is accompanied uh, by the direct uh, cascade of kinetic energy. So it is drawn here, where I, uh, I move the mouse. So we inject the kinetic energy uh, in uh, at some uh, size scale, and then the uh, the uh, fluid motion at this scale provokes the motion uh, on uh, lower scales, and again lower, lower, etc. And uh, uh, this takes uh, uh, takes place up to the uh, so-called uh, Kolmogor Kolmogorov scale, where the Kinetic energy uh, is uh, dissipated by by the viscosity, and uh, this is the direct uh, energy uh, cascade. And the fingerprint of this cascade is the Kolmogor Kol Kolmogorov spectrum of uh, of ki kinetic energy, and this uh, uh, spectral energy density is proportional to the k uh, to the power minus five uh, over three, where K is the wave, fact, uh, wave vector, or in another world, or words, the inverse size inverse size scale. And this is the, uh, the spectrum is visible uh, like like this. But uh, also, uh, it exists the case of uh, uh, two-dimensional turbulence, two-dimensional classical turbulence, and in is this case uh, we have the the two cascades. The inverse cascade of energy and the uh, direct cascade of entropy. Uh, the entropy is the quantity which is uh, uh, which is rather close to the energy, but it is about the not the uh, not the square of uh, velocity of the fluid, but the uh, 
uh, the uh, it is about the square of uh, uh, rotational of the angular velocity of the of the fluid and uh, it is uh, it is under the debate if uh, if in quantum turbulence uh, 2d and 3d uh, we have the cascade we have uh, the cascade in general and if we we have the cascade which is the direction of this cascade and some papers support the uh, direct cascade uh, some papers support inverse cascade so this is under question up to the days uh, and other uh, other important uh, Sergey, just a question by inverse yeah. you mean you mean what that you go from small scales to large scales or what do you mean by yes yes uh, yes for uh, inverse cascade is the transition of some uh, some quantity from from smaller scales to larger scales mm -hmm. like this for energy and like this for entropy and and what again uh, sets the direction uh, uh, what, 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 what is, what is uh, setting or defining the direction of uh, energy flow, if you wish, in, on, on these scales, uh, direct, as you call it, or inverse? What is, uh, uh, what is making the system to flow, to make the energy flow in this or that way? So, so in 3D turbulence, we have energy flows from, uh, from large scales to to small scales like why? this. Why? this well, well, the, my question is why, should, why should it happen? In th why is there this uh, direction? Is it the direct uh, cascade in 3D? Uh, why not the inverse in, in 3D? Uh, the, the, the difference in direction of energy cascades uh, in 2D and 3D is uh, is because of uh, momentum conservation uh, for the uh, wave uh, wave scattering. Mm -hmm. So this is the general uh, uh, general reason, and it is uh, de described in in um, in details in this uh, work of uh, Krishnan devoted to uh, classical 2D turbulence. Well. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes. The, okay, uh, let us pass to the uh, to, uh, to the to the number of questions on quantum turbulence. So uh, about the uh, questions about presence and uh, direction of the energy cascade, and also uh, it is uh, interesting if we have the fractal structures of uh, uh, quantum vortices and if this uh, fractal structure of quantum vortices are associated with uh, the energy cascade uh, because uh, uh, for classical turbulence it is it is known that this process is uh, mm, is uh, in fact uh, about the uh, is is about the fractals this the structure of uh, turbulence is very is uh, very self similar similar and the other question is possibility of uh, using of exciton polaritons for the studies of quantum turbulence. And uh, now, before studying the turbulence, uh, I should describe some methods used for this uh, because uh, they are important for uh, compre for co comprehension of the of the results. Uh, first, uh, uh, the, the very the, the very important. Uh, quantity about uh, about uh, uh, the important quantity for the turbulence is the kinetic energy spectrum. Well, well, uh, this uh, this uh, 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 this quantity, and uh, it exists several ways to uh, to compute this. Uh, uh, to, to compute this uh, spectral energy density, first we have the if we have the uh, full wave function of uh, uh, quantum fluid psi of r, uh, we can then uh, we can then calculate the uh, velocity field uh, 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 as uh, 
always in uh, quantum mechanics, and then to to divide this velocity field into two components, a compressible and uh, incompressible. And then uh, for the incompressible component, uh, we, uh, we calculate the, um, uh, the, the spectrum of uh, kinetic energy. And this, uh, this uh, decomposition is important because a compressible part of velocity uh, corresponds to, to the bogolons the uh, acoustic waves like excitations of density of a quantum fluid and the quantum vortices corresponds to incompressible part. Uh, but also uh, we can calculate the uh, kinetic energy spectrum uh, not based on the full wave function but based on the, on the positions and signs of the, uh, of the vortices. It is possible because, um, because the flows in the quantum fluids are more, more, um, more or less defined uh, by, the, by the positions and by the signs of the vortices. Uh, this is not impossible in a classical fluid uh, because the uh, vortices in classical fluid are not quantized. And uh, uh, on the contrary, uh, the, uh, the uh, vortices are quantized uh, in a quantum fluid. And uh, so uh, this, uh, this spectrum reads like, like this with uh, some, uh, some normalization uh, constants uh, with the with function f, which uh, gives the gives the energy of uh, uh, in energy spectrum of vortex core and also the function g and uh, this function is shaped by uh, coordinates and uh, signs of the of the vortices so um, i i would refer to this uh, uh, to this way to calculate the uh, kinetic energy spectrum as to semi analytical derivation uh, then uh, the other tool used for the studies is the clustering procedure. Uh, the, cl the definition of cluster is an aggregation of mutually uh, nearest uh, vortices of the same sign, uh, like, uh, like you see uh, in this small image. Also, uh, the, uh, the vortices can exist as the dipoles or, or uh, they can be also isolated. Uh, finally, this, uh, uh, this slide presents the, uh, the strategies, the ways of steering of a quantum fluid to create the, uh, to create the uh, vortices. Uh, first, uh, we used the, uh, the rotating cross and the rotating what we call spoon. Also, we used the, uh, the small spoons in Brownian motion. Uh, uh, we we used also the uh, the abruptly changing uh, potential uh, of the uh, white noise, and we used the rotators of the Gauss Lagarde shape. And uh, 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 in this case, we used this this equation to to simulate. You see that there is no lifetime and no um, no pumping. This is the uh, conservative case. Only the uh, only the depending on time the uh, steering potential and now i propose to uh, to see the to see the movie of uh, steering and this steering uh, duration of this steering is is about uh, uh, it is about uh, one nano, nanosecond i hope you see well this video so big, big blue uh, points are the, the, the steering spoons in Brownian motion, and these small, and these small points are the uh, quantum vortices. And then I, I uh, uh, this, uh, the, uh, this system. Uh, uh, evolves freely uh, 
for about uh, 10, 10 nanoseconds, and then the uh, then the spectra are calculated. Okay. So the, uh, the, uh, the results are as uh, follows. Uh, if we use the fully numerical, as, uh, fully numerical derivation of incompressible kinetic energy, uh, we see uh, we see uh, the following. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, wave vectors are measured in the units of uh, healing length. So, um, so the in the region in this uh, small um, small size scale region, we have the uh, spectrum minus k to the uh, k to the power minus three. It is a direct fingerprint of the core of the quantum vortex. And for uh, lower, uh, uh, lower wave vectors and larger scales, we have power minus one. And uh, this power minus one corresponds to the spectrum of uh, dipoles and to the spectrum of uh, uh, free, uh, free vortices. So um, uh, here we see the domination of the contribution from free vortices and uh, their dipoles. And uh, uh, to continue, uh, we pick up only the clustered vortices, uh, only clustered vortices, and then calculate the kinetic energy uh, for for them. And what happens uh, here on the uh, on the left? You see these uh, the, these results of clustering procedures. The large circles are for clusters, and the small circles are for dipoles and uh, isolated vortices. And uh, uh, here we see that for uh, uh, for clustered vortices, uh, for the uh, analytical semi-analytical procedure of restoration of uh, uh, spectrum, we have some region of a power minus five over three. Mm, so directly the uh, the Kolmogoro flow. Uh, and uh, now. And, and uh, yeah, also, it is important to, to say that uh, this situation is normal for all uh, steering uh, strategies, for all five steering strategies I have described previously. So the, uh, the conclusion is that uh, this energy spectrum is associated only with uh, clustered vortices. And uh, now it was analyzed the fractal dimension of the clustered vortices. Uh, to to calculate the fractal dimension using the Minkowski Bulligan uh, approach, uh, we should uh, cover uh, the points of the manifold uh, by the boxes of uh, varying for varying size, and then we count the number of boxes necessary to cover all of the manifold uh, versus uh, the box size, and then we take the uh, the limit of the logarithms of this uh, quantity, which uh, which gives the fractal dimension, and um, this uh, this figure shows the uh, this number of boxes versus the box size for uh, various uh, distributions of uh, uh, of points uh, in manifold. First, we have the uh, random distribution of uh, points with the abrupt transition between zero dimensional regime and two dimensional regime so there is that uh, there is no fractal structure in this case also uh, we we see the case uh, of uh, 2d turbulence uh, uh, for the points that corresponds to vortices or uh, uh, clustered vortices in turbulence and artificial fractal the serpinski triangle and you see uh, well that in some range uh, you have the uh, you you have the fractional uh, fractal dimension both for turbulence and for uh, Serpinski triangle. And as far as this is uh, this scale is a box size, we can transfer this uh, this scale to the uh, to the reciprocal quantity, namely to the uh, wave vector. And plot it together with the energy spectrum. And uh, here on this slide, blue, uh, uh, 
um, sorry, uh, red dot. Red dots give the kinetic energy spectrum, and the red curve give uh, give the uh, give the ball these uh, results of box counting procedure, and we see that the uh, the region where where we have some uh, fra fractional fra fractal dimension, and we where we have the uh, power law minus five uh, uh, over three, uh, they are really the same. These uh, these ranges. So uh, this is the fingerprint of the fact that uh, uh, this uh, Kolmogorov law, law is associated with fractal structures of the clustered vortices. Also, uh, we have tracked the uh, the initial period of steering uh, uh, to try to um, to try to uh, analyze the direction of the energy uh, transfer. And uh, here on the left, on the left panel, you see the energy spectra uh, for various time moments. Uh, uh, red for beginning, then to the green, blue, and uh, this uh, uh, this empty uh, empty uh, dots for one on a second. And you see that the energy at large scales uh, grows faster uh, than the energy at uh, small scales. If we plot this uh, ratio of energy stored at large scales and at small scales. Uh, as a function of time, we obtain the following uh, the following situation, and it means that the energy stored at large scales grows grows much faster. And this is the not the evidence, but the uh, rather fingerprint of the un, uh, inverse cascade. And the conclusions for this part uh, sounds as following. Uh, first, the of law becomes uh, visible after elimination of contribution of isolated uh, vortices and uh, dipoles. Uh, these, uh, these domains of Kolmogorov law are manifested for all uh, ways of steering of quantum fluid. And uh, the, the structures of clustered vortices uh, forms the fractals uh, at the same wave vector where the Kolmogorov law is visible. And du uh, during the, uh, uh, during the uh, steering of the, uh, of the quantum fluid, the energy uh, is transferred from uh, uh, low scales to uh, large space, space scales, which is the sing signature of the inverse cascade. And finally, all this in a real experiment on polaritons uh, can be uh, visible uh, only after measuring the uh, phase of wave function of uh, polaritons, because we need the uh, positions of uh, positions and signs of quantum vortices, and uh, these positions and signs can be obtained from the phase of the wave function. And now uh, I would like to, if I have time for this, uh, I uh, I can uh, drive to the second part of the of my talk. Well, I really I hope uh, I, I, yeah, I have a time. It's okay. You have like ten minutes, maybe. Is that okay? Well, yes. I will try to to be faster for for this part. And uh, uh, this part is on the. Uh, the solitons uh, in uh, quantum uh, fl fluids, but to start this uh, uh, history, uh, the the domain wall uh, between the two regions uh, on the upper bistability branch uh, with high density and on the lower bistability branch with low density uh, sh sh should be studied. And uh, uh, let us here uh, look uh, look some uh, some movie which. Mm, which uh, which shows uh, the behavior of this domain wall, and uh, uh, here uh, you see uh, the, the motion of this domain wall uh, at some uh, value of support support uh, laser. It is here, 
and uh, if uh, the value of laser if, if the intensity of laser is is lower than previously uh, there is the the contraction of the main on the upper polariton uh, uh, on the upper polariton branch so uh, and uh, we can calculate uh, calculate the uh, the velocity of this domain wall uh, whose motion you have seen as a function of uh, uh, amplitude of laser here and uh, we can recover it with a, a b stability uh, loop and we see that uh, at some uh, at, at some value of support uh, we have zero velocity and for uh, for uh, upper values we have positive velocity and negative velocity for for lower values uh, but now it is a question uh, what we what we consider uh, the um, uh, the configuration like this if we have this support everywhere and if we have some uh, some regions of uh, of pump parallel uh, you see uh, here the support is needed to provide the propagation of the domain wall when pump is uh, is needed for locally drive the um, uh, for locally seed or drive the uh, system to the uh, upper polariton uh, branch. But what we have, uh, what we will obtain if we have the two parallel pumps. In fact, we have collision of the domain walls, but uh, and this collision of two to the main walls evolves to the uh, to the solitons like this normally it is uh, normally a pair of uh, uh, solitons and but as it is known for the uh, for the uh, two dimensional quantum fluids the solitons are unstable uh, with respect to formation of modulational uh, instability and indeed uh, this uh, this is the result of uh, of a simulation with perfect in a translational invariance along a, a direction, uh, along vertical direction. If we add some very small noise, for example, in potential energy, uh, this uh, this disorder triggers the development of uh, instability, and the two solitons evolve either to anti-symmetric pattern or, or to symmetric pattern. And this is, in fact, the vortex and anti-vortex chain. To analyze what happens, uh, it is necessary to perform the uh, bogolubov degen analysis of, uh, of, uh, of the system. Uh, these uh, bogolubov degen uh, de equation are, uh, in fact, the, the very famous equations to obtain the dispersion of bogolons, uh, but uh, but now we have some arbitrary, uh, arbitrary uh, shaped uh, addition for linearization. Uh, this ansatz, uh, as you see, contains the initial unstable wave function, which is defined by the profile of the soliton, and some and some small addition. And uh, for the bogolons, we uh, uh, there are two uh, two exponential functions along both directions and along the the confined x direction we have some arbitrary function and uh, as as we see from this exponential uh, uh, on, on this uh, from this exponential functions if the frequency of uh, uh, such bogolon has the a positive imaginary part the amplitude of such uh, bogolons uh, uh, grows exponentially fast and uh, in fact well uh, this uh, uh, this is the spectra. This is the spectrum of bogolons with respect to uh, the vertical uh, wave vector, and the, uh, this is uh, this is its uh, uh, imaginary part. Imaginary part of its energy, and the bogolon with the highest uh, imaginary part of energy develops and manifests as the this modulational instability, uh, and uh, this. Uh, the symmetry of uh, of the final pattern depends on the uh, wave factor and the symmetry of the uh, bogolons. Uh, this is uh, this slide shows uh, probably the most important result from this part. It shows the phase diagram, uh, pump uh, 
pump support uh, for for the system. So horizontal axis uh, gives the intensity of uh, of support uh, in the corridor, and uh, uh, he, vertical axis gives the, the laser intensity on the walls. And uh, you see that, uh, and the col color shows the uh, color shows the magnitude of wave vectors of the uh, of the uh, bobolons or, or of the uh, instability. Uh, this diagram should be read as follows: uh, In this corner, uh, lower left uh, corner, we start from four solitons, which normally evolve to a two symmetric pattern. But they also can evolve to small uh, in this small region to anti-symmetric pattern, and also there is some region where these four solitons are stable. Uh, be, uh, between two these uh, blue curves, we have the uh, initially two uh, uh, two solitons, which evolve to symmetric pattern to anti-symmetric pattern or uh, uh, which can uh, undergo the uh, limit cycle regime. And this means the oscillations of, of the solitons uh, like this, like a cordon. Finally, at high values of pump and support, the, uh, the corridor is filled with the polaritons and no solitons are uh, from the beginning. Uh, and uh, uh, this, this uh, image was obtained using the Bogolubov uh, the Gen approach, right, like this. And also we can provide the simulation directly with a disorder and then to uh, to obtain other, either a symmetric pattern or anti-symmetric pattern. And these patterns more or less uh, correspond uh, to the uh, to the results from Bogolubov the Gen approach. Uh, also, uh, there are the situation with the uh, four solitons with four initial solitons and uh, also we can uh, we can send to the walls the uh, the signal the laser with a, a sun phase different uh, without support to preserve the to respect the symmetry and for for instance for the phase difference of uh, pi we can have three or one solitons and uh, all this research is rather close by it, its meaning uh, to this paper of, uh, uh, of the group of uh, Jacqueline Bloch. Uh, and uh, uh, in this paper, the authors studied uh, the solitons in one dimensional cavity. Uh, they really detect the formation of uh, solitons. Uh, they, are, they studied the behavior with respect to phases on the walls, but this is a one dimensional system. And uh, there is obviously no the phenomenon of snake instability. And uh, now uh, let us look to the to the situation when we fall to the uh, some points of limit cycle regime. And uh, in this case, we we observe the phenomenon of uh, repelling of rep repulsion of uh, uh, of the head of the soliton from the uh, from this uh, from the corridor that end. Now we have the um, now we have the situation with the uh, corridor uh, with the, not with the homogeneous in a y direction corridor but in the uh, with the closed corridor and this automatically leads to the solution of the uh, of the uh, of the lab labyrinth by the, by the dead end stroking algorithm. Uh, here I propose to again to to watch the movie. Uh, this uh, this movie uh, shows, in fact, the the solution of very very simple labyrinth. And uh, here you see this repulsion of the solid on that end from the uh, from the dead ends of the corridor. And here you see this uh, this limit cycle, these oscillations of the solitons. And uh, of course. Uh, we can use uh, use use this property to to solve the much uh, much larger labyrinth like this. This is labyrinth. This is the maze of one uh, millimeter in size. Once again, please. Uh, so, in the region of a limit cycle, 
the property of maze solving regime was discovered. Uh, we can uh, expand this configuration for other geometry of the labyrinth, uh, which, uh, uh, which here, uh, uh, in, in general, property of the maze solving is connection of of uh, two big uh, areas at uh, at uh, with uh, low density and uh, uh, the uh, size scaling uh, of the this uh, maze solution is up to the uh, coherence length of the quantum fluid. Well, I will skip this slide and I will go to the conclusions for the part two. First, the domain wall exists uh, between the regions uh, on uh, upper and lower bistability branches. And the solitons uh, can be confined between the uh, two walls uh, at high bistability branch. Uh, the disorder triggers the modulation or snake instability of these solitons, but this instability can be frozen by, by the flux coming from the walls of the corridor. And finally, the repulsion of the soliton head from the dead end of the corridor leads to all optical uh, solution of the, of the maze. And the, the main conclusion, I, I would like to say that the polaritonic platform is a very perspective platform for studies of uh, topological defects in quantum fluids because of uh, powerful techniques of uh, detection of wave function uh, profiles provided by the polaritonic uh, platform. Uh, they will publish uh, the, uh, the articles, uh, the papers uh, on the subject. Uh, in the chaos solitons and fractals on the quantum turbulence and PRL paper on the uh, on the solitons and also uh, there's uh, some papers are devoted to solitons are uh, submitted. Uh, uh, this paper contains uh, uh, a different configuration uh, with the solitons. Uh, uh, appeared in, in the hydrodynamic wake of the obstacle hit by uh, flow of the polaritons and uh, 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 which is more relevant to present talk. Uh, recently, it was uh, submitted a paper which shows the um, direct uh, experimental verification of the predictions related to the, to the solitons, to the solutions of labyrinth. You see the solution of this cross-shaped labyrinth and uh, uh, in fact, the, uh, the behavior of of the system is very close to the behavior of uh, of what predicted by by theory and uh, uh, simulations. So as you see, the agreement is really very nice. Uh, thanks you. Uh, thank you very much for the attention. Cheers from Vermont. So um, questions from the audience. So maybe I can uh, start with a, a simple question. You mentioned several times, uh, or you used several times uh, the terminology quantum fluid. Uh, at the same time, it seems to me that what you solve uh, uh, in theory are gross pitayevsky type equations. Is that correct? Yes. So to me, gross pitayevsky equation is a, a classical field equation. Nonlinear, of course, but uh, but a field, but a classical field equation. So uh, I'm, th this can immediately go into some philosophical direction. This discussion, but uh, is there more than uh, quantum? Then uh, there, there's certainly more quantum than than the gross pitayevsky equation uh, can uh, reproduce. Can you somehow say something about that? Uh, what what uh, is still missing in these considerations or what can be done? Well, I, here, here I would like to say that the, uh, the numerous studies show that gross Pitayevsky equation is the mighty and very powerful tool uh, for the description of special, tem special temporal dynamics of, uh, uh, of polaritons. And polaritons, of course, they are uh, quantum particles uh, with the phase 
and the phase, this phase is controlled by laser. This phase could be detected uh, by um, in uh, in experiments. So, in fact, uh, uh, I, I here my my feeling is rather to refer uh, the to the gross Pitayevsky equation, at least gross Pitayevsky equation used for polaritons, as to Schrodinger equation for polaritons with some nonlinear addition uh, to the uh, with some nonlinear addition uh, uh, to the uh, to this equation, which uh, describes the repulsion of polaritons due to their excitonic components uh, uh, repulsion. Okay, thank you. I think there is a question by Sarika. Sarika, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. So I have a question, like if you can go to your introductory slides, like maybe fifth or sixth slides in introduction part where you had shown, uh, yeah, maybe in the beginning, like, oh, uh, yeah, maybe next slide, uh, where you have this bistable kind of graph, you were increasing, you were citing this paper by PRA, yes, yeah, PRA paper. So uh, now, as I understand, this is the bistability reason which you have mentioned. So I have just like maybe not related with your work, but maybe this this picture, which is of course from this PRA paper, is that that what is the origin of this bistability? Like I mean, like uh, can in other circumstances you get a smooth second order transition, or maybe yeah, what is the origin of this bistability or this? Uh, first order phase transition here in this system. You, you mean the magnitude of this loop with respect to uh, with, res with respect to uh, laser powers or? No, so not the magnitude, the, what is, a, so this is a bistable, uh, uh, no, it's the same, same picture. Uh, you uh, have this bistable I reason. I have like to move to some backup slide, uh, which, I'm just going to some backup mm -hmm. slides with the stability. Uh, well, like maybe these uh, these slides are yeah, better. Okay. Okay. So you have this uh, discontinuous jump, and then which is accompanied with uh, a bistable reason. Okay. So you have uh, like two stable uh, states, and then in between, like in the previous slide, you had this dashed line, which uh, corresponded to unstable state. So my question is, what is the origin of occurrence of this bistable reason or bistable, yeah. Why so, you uh, get this bistability here well, in the system, yeah. Uh, well, the, the best way to obtain the, the bistability uh, is to start from the, uh, from the zero dimensional gross Pitayevsky equation like this, mm -hmm but then mm -hmm. to solve it in stationary case mm -hmm. and to solve for, uh, for laser uh, amplitude mm -hmm. as a function of uh, uh, polariton wave function. And then to, uh, to rotate uh, uh, for, uh, for 90 degrees the obtained, uh, the obtained curve. And obviously uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, parabolic function uh, for uh, of the third order for the uh, for the uh, 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 for the laser amplitude and if if we rotate then uh, for instance we obtain this this nice uh, blue curve and uh, uh, in fact for 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 uh, some given value of uh, of laser amplitude, we have even three uh, three three uh, three possible points uh, to, uh, to 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 obey uh, to obey uh, this uh, this equation. But uh, uh, this region is uh, this dashed region. It uh, it can be shown by bogolubov degen analysis that points on this, on, uh, with this negative slope are unstable. And so yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this instability drives the system either to upper or either to lower polariton branch. This depends on the, on the initial conditions. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, okay, so uh, maybe just I want to understand a bit more. So is it possible, maybe this is maybe uh, not out of the uh, scope question because I am not from this area, but uh, is it possible that uh, you can get a continuous uh, uh, transition? It means just one single stable state instead of uh, bistable state, which is accompanied by two stable and one unstable state. Is it possible in any circumstances for your system that you get just simple uh, second order transition or single stable state, like by changing some parameter of your system or properties of your laser? Is it possible? Well, in, in general, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the behavior of the system is defined by the history of, uh, or is, uh, is defined by the history of the, uh, of the system. And uh, according to this history, uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, go uh, to some stable to, to some uh, stable uh, uh, states, or uh, uh, we can go to the unstable state. But but then some perturbation of the system leads to development of the uh, of the uh, stable states. Well, in fact, the, this history of bistability is close to the uh, to the history of uh, of uh, of the solitons because these parallel solitons uh, are stable without disorder. But if we uh, if we add some uh, disorder, uh, this uh, this um, this unstable states evolves to some some stable state. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, more questions? Uh, let me ask, uh, I uh, do remember some uh, papers and results on, uh, on uh, well, let me call that again, truly quantum uh, fermionic, um, uh, fermionic, uh, solitons and also snaking instabilities. I heard a, a number of these uh, buzzwords in connection with uh, 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 systems of interacting fermions. So here you basically have, you could say you have bosonic statistics, right? Plus dissipation, of course. Um, do you know anything about these uh, papers or these, uh, the connection to your results of these? Well, uh, of course I was uh, concentrated uh, on the uh, on the uh, case of uh, polaritons of bosons, but uh, uh, really uh, we can really we can free our mind from the uh, from the statistics and just to um, to uh, to use the fact that the solitons are the uh, consequences of the gross pitayevsky equation. So if some system uh, obeys the gross pitayevsky equation uh, it should be uh, it uh, it should have the uh, the solitonic solution uh, then and solitonic solution in 2d is normally uh, unstable due to this modulational instability and uh, this is uh, uh, well using this approach i can uh, i can uh, describe every system which is described by the uh, by the gross pitayevsky equation and uh, this is re really what i do because well my my uh, my simulations uh, just know the gross pitayevsky equation and uh, this is all and these results are obtained in the simulations thank you more questions Well, if that uh, doesn't seem to be the case, then uh, maybe we can uh, thank our speaker, Juzar, with uh, a no, no. Merci because it was, it was a great pleasure to, to hear uh, lots of uh, applauding. So uh, it, uh, really, I'm happy to, uh, to have the possibility to, uh, to present you my results. Uh, uh, thanks for attention once again. Thank you. And uh, 